Hi, my name is Seamus Allen. I'm Product Portfolio Manager at Dynamic Ratings. Today we're going to talk about configuring a Dynamic Ratings B100 electronic temperature monitor. To do this, you'll need to be already connected to the B100. For information on how to connect to the B100, check out the link in the description box below. So if you open the web browser and put in the local IP address of 10.0.0.1, You'll be shortly presented with a login screen. Enter the username and password and press login. Once you're on the B100 homepage, if you go to the tab at the top, which is labeled configuration, it will bring up the configuration section of the software. The first tab that comes up under configuration is the device IO configuration screen allows you to configure the major input outputs of the B100. The first input is the top oil temperature input, which is a default input on the B100. And here you can see there are up to four in alarm controls. Alarms, alarms and controls can be enabled or disabled, and when they're enabled, they can be set to be logged or not logged, depending on the application. Now for each alarm and control, there is a set point at which the alarm or control comes active, and a bandwidth at which point the alarm or control turns off. So for this alarm and control number one on the top oil temperature, at 71 degrees Celsius, the, set, the temperature alarm will come on, and at 61 degrees, the alarm will switch off again. Each of these alarms and controls may be used for different purposes, such as turning on cooling fans or pumps, uh, or alarms or trips. There's a second RTD input on the B100 that may be used for the ambient temperature, which is just logged in the data logs, or it may be set to the tap changer LTC tank temperature. When it is set to the LTC tank temperature, the system presents you with four standard alarm and controls based on absolute temperature, which work the same way as the top oil temperature alarms. There's also an LTC differential algorithm that compares the difference between the tap changer temperature and the tank temperature. This uses a filtering algorithm and provides a single alarm with a default set point of minus 10 degrees and a default period of 24 hours, which works best for most applications. There is a digital input on the B100, which is used to select between an oil natural and an oil forced or oil directed winding gradient. This is useful if the transformer has oil pumps and is used as an input to tell the system to switch between either of the two winding gradients. Typically this is used in a way that the digital input comes active when the pump is turned on, but if your control wiring circuitry is different, you can select the checkbox to, to invert this input. The B100 has three CT inputs. When you enable one of the CT inputs, you're presented with the settings for that CT input. The first uh, entry is for the rated current of the winding that you're monitoring with the CT input, uh, and the second settings are for the CTs the first CT is the bushing CT on the transformer. Typically the primary turns are similar to the rated current of the transformer. And the secondary turns are set to 5 or 1 amp. The system is also provided with an interposing CT, which typically has a ratio of 1000 to 1. However, if the system has multiple turns on the secondary of the CT, it can be adjusted as necessary. The winding hotspot calculation configuration is where the transformer test data is entered into the B100 for the winding gradients. For an IEC transformer test report, the hot winding hotspot factor and the rated uh, gradients are separated out into two separate boxes. For an IEEE transformer test report, you can set the hotspot factor to one and use the rated hotspot gradient in the right-hand boxes. Like the previous temperature settings, the windings have a number of alarm and controls with the same set points and bandwidths that can be adjusted, as well as absolute load current alarms, which are set based on the current passing through the transformer and may be used for predictive cooling. There are two more CTs that may be used if there are inputs wired up to these. Now we're at the digital output settings section, where the, each of the six digital outputs can be set up for an output. This is as simple as selecting one of the alarm or controls that have been previously defined from the drop-down box. The system also groups some of these alarms into any control number one, two, three, four, where the system may allow you to select any of the number one controls. 
It's also possible to use some relay output logic, such that if you would like the top oil temperature number one and the tap changer temperature number one control to activate this particular relay, a small plus sign allows you to select some of the relay outputs. Finally, the system has two analog outputs that may be set between milliamp or voltage output. The system automatically detects what these have been set to. To change the settings for these, select one of the variables that you would like set out to this output. And here you're presented with the uh, internal value in terms of degree centigrade and the output in terms of 0 to 10 volts, where the scaling may be adjusted based on your application. Once this is complete, click the save button and the system will save and apply the settings. A couple of the other screens to look at are the device communication screen where the system allows you to select between the different SCADA and communication settings on the B100. If your B100 is loaded with Ethernet and or serial device options, this page is where you're able to change the IP address of the Ethernet port and select the two SCADA protocols on the Ethernet or serial ports when available. When selecting one of the serial SCADA communication protocols, the options for that protocol are provided. Finally, on the system settings page, it's possible to see some of the higher level settings on the B100, including text information such as the transformer ID, the site name, whether the internal insulation aging model is set to IEEE or IEC mode, the date and time and time zone for the unit, as well as some of the security settings. The major security settings are with a configuration. These web pages are accessible over the Ethernet connection, if available, is enabled or disabled. The ability to change the login passwords and to change the security settings for the interface unit. Whether the settings can be changed on the interface unit and whether the network settings are even visible on the interface unit for security purposes. Once all of these settings have been changed and set, it may be worthwhile to download a copy of the configuration settings for your settings configuration database. Uh, these can be downloaded and applied to other units or this unit in the future. To up upload the configuration files to a unit, the update page provides the ability to browse, select and update the settings. Once you've completed the settings changes, you can log out by clicking the log out button at the top right of the screen and the system returns the login screen. Thanks for watching. My name is Seamus. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos.